Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with srlounge.com. All right, guys, so we're going to move on to the tone curve. We have exercise file 1-6 selected, and this shot was actually shot on an iPhone. We did this back when we did the iPhone fashion shoot video, and we basically went out and shot an entire professional fashion shoot with just our iPhone and two $30 reflectors. So we got some pretty cool stuff out of it. Okay, so this is a JPEG image. We're going to open up our tone curve panel by hitting Control-2 or Command-2 on a Mac. Now, if you guys haven't used tone curves before, basically it's just another way that you can use to adjust your exposure, your contrast levels in an image. And here's how it works. It's really kind of simple after you kind of understand the basics. On the left side of our tone curve, we have our shadows. And on the right side, we have our highlights. And then we have everything in between. What you see with this graph right here is basically where the uh, image tones are resting. So most of our image tones right now are in the shadows, which means it's a little bit too dark. So if we want to make an adjustment, let's say we want to pull up the midtones. Well, we go to the center of our tone curve and we click and then we pull it up and out. And you can see that it has the exact same effect of brightening our image just the way that exposure would have in the basic panel. If we want to darken our shadows, which is that midtone shadow area, we just click right here and we pull it down. If we want to raise up our deep shadows, like down in the, in the blacks, we would just create another point in the blacks and drag up. Okay, same thing with highlights. If we want to pull the highlights down, we just drag it down and, and so on. Now, this wasn't a good adjustment by any means, but this is a great way to make these adjustments to our image. We also have a little more control in other ways over the deep shadows and the deep highlights. We can kind of create image fades and stuff like that with our tone curve. Now, to be able to adjust the points on this tone curve, you do need to make sure that your point curve is set to custom, basically that this button is selected. When you click on stop editing point curve, it won't allow you to edit those curves the same way. So when I click now, it's adjusting an entire section as opposed to give me individual points. And it also brings up these basically sliders and stuff like that. If I'm going to use the tone curve, I don't ever use these sliders because look, if I'm going to use the sliders, I might as well be using all the sliders that are in uh, process version 2012. It's the exact same thing, only it's more powerful here than it is here. So if we're going to be using the tone curve, I would recommend that you're using it uh, just in custom setting and an editing point by point so you have much more control over it. Now here's the cool part about the tone curve in process version 2012. In Lightroom 4, you can actually now have control over each individual channel Whereas in Lightroom 3, you could only control overall RGB. You only had one tone curve. So let's reset this out. I'm going to hit reset to reset the entire image. And let's go up here to our channel and let's adjust in what we think would be a good tone curve for this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the mid-tone, uh, I'm going to pull basically the overall exposure up. And then I'm going to drop the uh, mid-tone shadows a little bit so we get a little more contrast. And I'm going to add a little more of the highlights just so we get a little more contrast in the highlights. And that looks great. Now if I feel like there's say too much reds or too much greens or blues in the image, I can switch my channel to red. So I want to start by pulling some of the reds out of the highlights because I think her skin is a little bit too red. So I'm going to pull some of that out. And now I see a little bit too much green. So we're going to pull out a little bit of green from the green side. Okay, until we have a nice balance between the two. Now I can also create kind of cool vintage faux cross process effects by adding a little bit of blues into the shadows. So I'm going to crank up the shadows a little bit with a little bit of blues. And we're going to pull it down in the highlights so we have her skin tone kind of be more natural and kind of more real. I'm going to go back into my greens and I'm going to adjust up a little bit the greens and the highlights. Just so her skin looks a little more even. This might be a little bit too much. And then I'm going to pull it down in the shadows a little bit so we have a little more of those blues and reds appear. So it's a cool way of getting really cool tone effects in our image just by adjusting the red, green, blue values in our tone curve, which now we have full control over, whereas we didn't in Lightroom 3. All right, guys, so there's a few other settings here that I want to go over. If we click on this point curve right here, it's going to bring up a couple options. We can choose linear, medium contrast, or strong contrast. And these are basically custom curves that are set up to create strong con contrast, medium contrast, or just be a linear line that we can edit on our own. We also have another way of adjusting the tone curve, which is by the point curve adjustment tool. And this adjustment tool, basically, once you select it, you can drag it over a particular area. And let's switch this back to RGB. We can drag it over a particular area, like say this shadow area in the hair, and you can see exactly where on the point curve we are and where we're going to be adjusting. So if I say her hair is too dark right here and I want to pull it up, I just click, left click, and drag up, and it adjusts all my shadows up. Now if I say this area over here is too bright, I can click and drag down and it'll adjust that area down. Now if you create really harsh bends in your tone curve like right here, you will get some strange effects out of it. 
So we'll teach you guys exactly how to use the tone curve more later, but just know that these are all the functions that we have available. Once again, we can turn off the entire tone curve just by flipping the off button and see what it looks like before. We can also use the before after key, which is just backslash in the develop module. All right, guys, so we're gonna hit reset. We're gonna close the tone curve by hitting control two or command two. And now let's go on to the next tutorial.